Welcome to Online Offscript, where we discuss trending topics and all things new on the internet. I'm Mira McNitt, the social media director. And I'm Michelle Tran, a social media coordinator. This week, we're talking about building a brand on TikTok. Our guest today is Fiona Chan, the founder and CEO of Euthphoria, an innovative makeup brand that you can sleep in due to the high quality, unique formulas. So Fiona launched Fiona Co. Chan in 2021 with the idea of Euthphoria coming when COVID hit. She believed the best part of wearing makeup is going out, but oftentimes people forget to take their makeup off. So she created a line so good that you could sleep in it. Since then, she's been building the brand on TikTok and currently it has 116.7 thousand followers and 3.1 million likes. Hi, Fiona. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Good. I'm so excited to be here. Very excited to be talking to you today. So can you tell us about your brand? Yeah, so I am the founder of um, Youthphoria. We make makeup that you can sleep in. So what's really unique about our makeup products is that they're made to act like skincare. I test everything by sleeping in it, and I make my husband sleep in them too. Um, we're best known for creating the world's first color-changing blush oil, but since then we've expanded our line, and now we are sold at Ulta, at Credo, and at JCPenney. This isn't a question, but I just want to let you know that I was so obsessed with Euphoria that I had brought this up to Mira and Jordan, and I was like, I tried like the the primer, the Euphoria primer, I used it today, and I was like, I love it so much. And then today I also used the, not the color changing blush, the non-color changing one, but like the darker shade. Love it. Shade. Yeah, yeah, so what's um, a perfect, perfect um, example, like primer, for example, normally they're made from silicone ingredients, like normally primers or something that like fills in pores. Um, normally the silicones are made from fossil fuels. And what we did differently was we used all plant-based ingredients. We used ingredients that were non comedogenic and really made to, um, number one, help protect your skin, but also um, help makeup lay on more nicely. Yeah, I love, I that. love that so much, especially since like I always grew up hearing my mom being like, makeup's not good for you. Like, it's bad for your skin. And as someone who, like, struggles with acne, it's always, like, kind of that struggle between, like, you want to kind of cover it and, you know, like, make yourself feel good with the makeup, but you don't want the makeup to make your skin worse, your acne worse. So I feel like that's why the whole makeup you can sleep in really resonates with a lot of people, um, just because it's good for your skin when you're putting it on as well. It's basically skincare, like you're saying. Yeah, I, I was just always thinking, of, like, also grew up with my mom saying, you know, never wear makeup. It's so bad for you. And I think she did not, you know, like it when I started really wearing makeup. And I definitely did struggle with acne. It, it kind of coincided at the same time. Um, but for this, um, for a lot of our products, I was like, I wish this existed when I was younger. And like, if I'm putting something on my face for, you know, 16 hours a day, like it'd be nice if it also helped um, improve my skin. And um, when I started the brand, I was living in Asia for, for uh, the first year and I got so inspired by how they do their makeup routines there because there is like this idea that um, your makeup and your skincare is actually one routine and you can, how you adjust your makeup routine can improve your skin. So definitely something I'm very inspired by. To talk more about like the why. So I know that you said that you made this makeup brand because you wanted like makeup that was actually good for you. Um, but I know that you had also mentioned that you had started it because you were in China, I believe, like at like beauty school. Um, can you talk just a little bit more about like that experience, how it, I guess, influenced the brand where it is today? Yeah. So prior to starting Euthoria, I had no experience in makeup. I used to work in tech and my job um, led me to traveling back and forth between the West Coast and, and Asia. And I was constantly in some of these just really polluted cities because that's where data centers were. And it was just kind of like what I what I had done. And I had realized, okay, when I'm in these very polluted cities, my makeup and my skincare just doesn't really work the same way. And then fast forward to, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of years, I ended up um, getting married. Um, me and my husband were long distance between the West Coast and, and Hong Kong. And um, a few months after we got married, COVID hit, hit Asia before it hit the U.S. And it was very much clearly like, okay, we are not, um, we're not jumping on a plane. So I ended up with one suitcase, um, ending, uh, ended up being in Asia. And I thought, okay, well, if 
if I am just kind of stuck in here, I really want to sort of make a brand. And all the best ideas for Youth for you came about that first week. Um, even like the tagline, life's messy, but your makeup isn't. It's because we were, I was stuck in a messy apartment. Um, it was like my husband's like bachelor pad. And, um, you know, the, the fun aspect, the colorful aspect, it was something that I really missed because it was, you know, one week of not wearing makeup. And I was like, okay, makeup's actually about like seeing people and, and making connections. And that's really what resonated with me. And um, wouldn't it be so great if like, we had makeup you can sleep in because I always fall asleep in my makeup. Was there a reason that you had started off with the color changing blush as like your first product or was it just something that you were like, oh my God, like I just want to try it and just came to you? I really wanted to create a universally flattering blush. I was always just kind of thinking about it. I've always loved to blush and sometimes I've seen shades where, you know, it's marketed as universally flattering, but because of like some of the, um, undertones or like the glitter that's in it, it's actually not truly universally flattering. So I had just kept thinking, okay, how can I make this? How can I do this? And I just remember like I was walking down the street one day and it, I felt like it just smacked me like right, right, uh, right in my face that, you know what, color changing that would work. Um, at the time, no one had made a blush oil, not really. And I was like, okay, it'd be cool if it was like kind of like a face oil and it was like good for your skin and maybe it has like a cool like glowy effect. Um, had never really seen anything like that before. Um, and then, you know, also didn't tell anyone what I was doing. And um, for some of our early formulas, I remember testing it on my husband. I was like, oh, it's a completely different color on you, but it's the right color. So that, that was really interesting. And I remember also um, I did one side of my face with Art blush and one side with like a powder blush or something sent it to all my friends didn't even tell them what I was doing I was like which side looks better and when it was very like objectively you know it's it's the color changing blush side and I was like okay I think we're we're on to something that is so cool and then like so you said you have a background in tech and then you just kind of decide to start this makeup brand can you talk a little bit more about like I guess the trial and errors of creating like a color changing blush which is so based in like chemistry and science um, that you didn't have before like that background yeah, I think, you know, when I um, worked in tech, it was always just this mindset of if you're doing something you've that no one else has ever done before, like, you you know, that's something that is possible. And I always tell myself, you know, if no one's ever done it before. You don't need imposter syndrome. You just need to try and, and see um, what you can create. And so um, for our color changing blush, I, I really just had this idea and I had this like, oh, I wish I did this and it looked like that. Um, and so when you, or when I found the formula um, that we ended up going with and that went through several iterations, it was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I wanted. And that's exactly what I was looking for. There's definitely like this um, emotional spark that like when you, when it's the right formula, you're like, okay, that's, that's the one. It's a, it's a really fun feeling. I love that. Just everything like falling into place. And then I know you just mentioned like imposter syndrome as well. That's actually perfectly on topic with our team. We've been talking about it a lot um, just because like our agency is a lot of younger people. I know personally myself, like I just graduated college last year and kind of got hired here fresh out of college. So imposter syndrome for us is like so real. Can you talk a little bit more about that from like the founder perspective, like especially not having that background in makeup um, and just like, you know, imposter syndrome for a founder? Yeah, I think I always tell myself if I'm doing something no one has ever done before, like, you know, th there's no need to have imposter syndrome. Um, I just have to figure out in a way that works best for me, um, especially for even like this company, like nothing that we did was because, you know, I read, oh, someone else did it this way. It was just what worked for us. And, you know, with um, things constantly changing, I think you know, uh, just having an a openness to learning is will go a long way. And, you know, with marketing, everything changes like every couple of weeks. So I don't know that imposter syndrome like really needs to exist in marketing these days. Truly. Marketing is just honestly trial and error. Lots of trial and error. Yeah. Okay. Let's just talk about like your products, I guess, because I know you just released the new face wash. Can you talk a little bit about the inspiration behind that? Yeah, so the Night Off Face Wash is our newest launch. We launched it um, a little bit over a month ago. And this was something that kind of came out of necessity. So I've been working on a foundation. And a big thing that I was trying to figure out was, what is it about foundations that make it so bad to sleep in? Like, why why do we just have this perception that it's bad for your skin? And um, so I tested a ton of different foundations from, you know, from basically high-end drugstore everything in the middle. 
And I realized two things. Number one, there are some foundation formulas that are actually really hard to wash off. And number two, um, I found out that a lot of face washes aren't that effective at removing makeup. A lot of face washes aren't like meant to uh, wash makeup off. Um, and that's something that I've, I, I am very confused by. Like, you know, if I if a lot of people wear makeup, you know, it would make sense that your face washes would remove makeup. Um, so just kind of through my own necessity so that I can continue developing products, I had asked my lab, like, just make me a ton of face washes. I need to just have something where I know it can remove makeup even um, for just some of these hard to remove formulas, but it has to be gentle because I have like the most sensitive skin. And this was the only one that worked. Um, this is really great when used with our primer because our primer acts as this barrier between your skin and your makeup. And it gives your makeup something to bind onto that's like not your pores, not your direct skin. And so it's a really easy way to just have like one step at the end of the night and remove your makeup. I didn't realize this before, but when you wash your face and you go to towel dry, and you see that makeup residue, it basically means your makeup has not fully been washed off. So when we were testing um, this face wash, like one of the big surprises, I was like, okay, my white towels are still clean. Now I actually know um, that, you know, all my makeup's being washed off. And it, it had just such a big impact on my skin when um, I was using it that I was like, okay, I, I really want to launch it. Um, you know, I, I love makeup and I love wearing it, but I didn't want it to get like a bad rep just because some of the face washes weren't that effective. Um, so it was something where I felt like I really needed it personally. Um, and I thought, you know, a lot of face washes really don't, don't wash off makeup. It's, it still blows my mind. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know that sometimes I've used a face wash and, you know, it doesn't come off all the way. People are like, you shouldn't use the makeup wipes either because it's like it tugs at your skin. There's so many like things to consider when we're talking about like our makeup, our skincare. So I think it's kind of funny that you're like, I made this face wash out of necessity because I needed it to take off all my makeup. Yep, exactly. So I'm taking your online quiz right now um, because I'm like, what am I doing wrong in my skincare and my makeup? How did you develop that quiz? And do, did you find, like, do people take it and do they buy the recommendations from it? Yeah, I think it's, um, we, do, we definitely do see people um, take the quiz and it's really for um, a way for me to kind of um, give some suggestions that are tailored to, you know, your skin type and how you use products. Um, something I learned when I was still in Asia was you can change your makeup routine depending on how your skin's acting that day. So that doesn't exacerbate any problems. Let's say you have dry skin or oily skin or the weather changes and you have, you're experiencing some of that, those skin changes. So, um, that's what I really like about that quiz. I'm like, it recommended to me the primer and the setting spray and the color changing blush and the blush brush, which I want to buy the face wash because now you've got me thinking like, oh my gosh, is my face wash taking off my makeup? So I'm about to go buy a whole bundle. Um, but the quiz was fun. It made me think about my, like my makeup habits. So do you, do you look at the results and look at like, here's how a lot of our shoppers are behaving with their makeup? Is that like, inspiring you like, oh, a lot of people like aren't using sunscreen. We need to like work in a sunscreen product or something like that. Well, well it's, I have like a, a question that, that's like, do you wash your makeup off every night? And surprisingly, not a lot of people wash. I mean, a, a surprising amount of people don't wash off, wash their makeup off every night. Wow. More, more so than is, I expected. <laughs> so is that informing any products are like that are in development or anything you're trying to do? I think um, at least when it comes to content, even things like um, sunscreen and, you know, creating some education around like, you know, your sunscreen sometimes can dissolve your makeup. So, um, you know, sharing that primer is actually a good barrier between your sunscreen and your makeup. Yeah. So definitely like the habits um, are really helpful as well as, you know, as providing as much education about how your skincare routine is interacting with your makeup. I do have a question to ask. I don't know if you can answer it, but the thing that I am constantly looking for is I'm always looking at different moisturizers. So do y'all have any any moisturizers planned to come out? I don't have any moisturizers planned, but I will give a tip because um, I think it's a little bit, uh, I don't know, I feel like it's it's a tip that goes a long way that not only we'll talk about is that sometimes when your skin is really dry, it actually um, 
might be better depending on, on what's going on with your skin to use like a gel based moisturizer and stuff like a really thick cream and the reason why is because sometimes your skin is like dry on the surface and so like the thick creams can't um, penetrate the, the skin as well so that's my moisturizer tip i've been loving gel moisturizers lately that's what i've been on and because i noticed that my like my moisturizer was just pilling off my skin and i was like something's wrong here. So I went from a cream to a gel and I've been loving it. So I'm always on the hunt now for like better gel moisturizers. So I love that you just explained why that works because I never really understood why. What are the benefits of the green chemistry principles that you use in formulating makeup? Yeah. So just to take it a step back, green chemistry, it's basically a set of 12 principles that the EPA created to kind of uh, aim at pollution prevention. Um, in practice, what it means for us as a makeup brand is really looking for ingredients that are not sourced from fossil fuels. So I didn't know this before getting into makeup, but a lot of ingredients in general, um, like it, it doesn't have to just be makeup, but just a lot of ingredients are made from um, fossil fuels, but it doesn't have to be that way. So in makeup, you can use synthetic ingredients and natural ingredients, but it can come from a plant or something more renewable. For me, I find that it has always this additional skincare benefit. And, um, you know, I always love to choose plant-based whenever I can. So this is clearly like a unique cornerstone that your makeup has. Do you lean into that on your social media presence? Because I know that part of the success of Euphoria is the the social media um, following that you've grown. Yeah, I mean, I'll talk about it. I love um, being able to chat about like how I choose ingredients, why I choose ingredients. Sometimes I nerd out and I don't even know if anyone cares, but sometimes like, you know, people are asking and they're curious. Um, what's really great about um, being so involved in the product development and the formulation is I get to choose the ingredients that we use. And every time that um, we can find something where it feels nice, it lays so nicely on skin, has a skincare benefit, plus it's made... Um, from ingredients that also has these like antioxidant benefits. It's, it's always, it's, you know, it's always a win for us. Do you have any goals for 2023 when it comes to your, either your marketing or your business growth or anything like that? Anything y'all are trying to do? Yeah, I, you know, I've always um, intended, like I really would love to do like a full face of euphoria. So kind of um, getting closer to that goal. Um, I don't think it'll happen all at once in 2023. I think that'd be too ambitious, but getting closer to, like, to that goal is definitely a wish for um, this year. That sounds amazing. Is there, like how long is the process for you to come up with a new product? It depends on the product. Some products have taken a couple of years. There's still products I've been working on that I've been working on since 2020. Um, and it really just kind of depends how much, how many changes we go through, what happens in testing. Um, so it's different by product, but I've been working on a ton since, you know, since I started the brand. Oh, that's so exciting. Um, is there anything are, other than your blush oil? Cause obviously like, that was your, your baby, I would say of like the products that you've put out. Is there anything that you've put out that you were just super excited about and that the, people really got excited about too? I love, um, I love our primer. So even though our blush, I mean, I love it for a, n a number of reasons. I thought that our primer was our most innovative product uh, that we've ever created because there's so many different um, skincare actives in like the entire formula. Like the way that I like to think about it is here's a tube. How many benefits can I fit into the tube? Um, and one of the things that it does is, um, if you're ever like allergic to makeup, I'm super allergic to makeup and I have gone to the hospital many times for allergic reactions. Um, this has an ingredient that kind of stops hives, that redness. So I, I put it in because I was like, I need something that I can feel like it's like an insurance policy for my skin in case number one, like I don't like the foundation texture or number two, I'm just allergic to the ingredients in a foundation. So that's been, um, Kind of like a game changer for me like because i i don't know i have very reactive skin and the fact that it also takes down redness is great because a lot of times um what you would do for redness is just add green on top sometimes that can look a little bit gray or it can mess with the texture of your foundation so this just takes the redness down um, at the skin level and it's like a really easy way to um let's say you don't want to wear the foundations uh, or like any complexion products. So it's like really great skin tone replacement, but it has this beautiful, beautiful texture. And if you ever hate, um, if like foundations look cakey or anything like that, this has this texturing ingredient that um, 
kind of this kind of acts like sphinx for your face where it kind of creates a smooth surface so if you ever like move your face like smile or just you know kind of move your face at all you're not going to get that creasing so it's a really like i use it underneath everything is your allergy to some makeups part of why your products are so clean and green yeah definitely can you talk more about how you like learned more about what goes into creating green products like was that something that you set out from the front and you were like this has to like be green or like be clean products or like was that something that you figured out as you were developing I definitely like using um ingredients that are as clean as possible I think you know when you can select ingredients like why not use like the best highest quality ingredients um and then I think when I made the real, or when I found out that a lot of um, makeup ingredients are just made from fossil fuels, I was like, okay, we will actually just wear this for a couple hours a day, and then we wash it down the drain. We might swallow some because it's a, you know, in lip glosses or lipsticks. And I was like, if I'm given the option to um, select something that comes from a renewable ingredient, like why, why not? Um, you know, we'd still use synthetic ingredients, but I do try to, um, as much as I can, just try to find find it from a plant instead of fossil fuels. I think that's great, especially since like de-influencing is such a trend on TikTok and social media right now. I think that companies that are like that are green and are more thoughtful in their products are kind of like surviving the de-influencing because people, one, believe in what they're doing and two, like do get better results when it's cleaner like this. So I think that's really cool. I'm very thoughtful that like, yeah, I do wash my like this little bit of makeup that I have on right now. It's not going to be seen probably beyond this podcast recording. Um, and so, yeah, to to make it out of products that's going to have a long-term benefit or at least, like, be good for the earth is important. I like that. Jumping on to what Mira said, so I know she mentioned de-influencing is, like, a trend, but I feel like there's been a lot of, like, beauty trend cycles that we've seen on TikTok, at least. Like, once I can think of, like, double cleansing or, like, slugging last winter, that got me through the winter. Like, that was amazing. But is there any that you can think of that have influenced you or that you're just particularly loving? Oh, I like I like slugging. You can actually use our primer as a form of daytime slugging if you don't want to use um, Vaseline in the day. Um, I, actually, I, I like slugging. I think I learned um, so much from TikTok. I like um, skincare cycling. I like, I don't know, I like all of the hacks and tips and tricks. I get a kick out of it. I try everything. Um, I don't know if I record everything, but I do try everything. And what I like about um, the TikTok trend cycle and how fast it is, is like people are really creative with like some of the hacks that they're trying. Even like the spatula foundation trick have been really loving. Um, There's just so much that, you know, was, I I feel like all these like hacks and tricks, like I definitely didn't grow up watching it even on YouTube or on Instagram, but now that there's so much on, um, TikTok, it's been, it's been super fun to experience because, you know, makeup isn't something, makeup and skincare isn't just, you know, one, one way, one step. There's like all these different new ideas and new tricks. One, I want to know how the primer can be used for day slugging. And I, I need to know more about day slugging because I know about like nighttime slugging, but I don't know about day slugging. And two, oh my gosh, I was, oh, do you like test your products in these trends and then like show them to TikTok and be like, oh, I see this trend going around. I have this product that I think could work with it. I'm going to try it and see what happens. Is that something that you have done? (laughs) So for daytime slugging, um, slugging is like you basically use Vaseline to create this protective layer. It kind of seals in your skincare and, you know, it prevents essentially like all of your, um, your nice skincare ingredients from evaporating at night. So with our primer, it is a, a very like um, emollient uh, type of formula. So you can you can think of it as the same way. So after you do um, your entire skincare routine and your moisturizer, you can use this to kind of seal in your skincare. So like nothing's basically evaporating during the day. Um, so it's a really great um, it's a really great way to you know number one protect your skin from any irritating ingredients, but also um, lock in your skincare. So you, I like to think of this as like the bridge between like your skincare routine and your makeup routine. Um, if you're using it after 
sunscreen, it can actually help prevent the sunscreen from dissolving your makeup. Um, but it's, it's just like this really, um, you know, I, I love slugging, but I'm not going to wear Vaseline in the day. And so it's just like a, um, a great way where, you know, you can have an even skin tone, um, really nice texture and still kind of get the same benefits of slugging. That's amazing. I was going to ask about sunscreen. Um, cause that's one of the problems I find is that everyone's like, oh, well you have to re reapply your sunscreen every two hours. I'm like, well, if I have makeup on one that's like interrupting my sunscreen and two, like I can't put it back on. So the fact that it like helps it a bit is exciting. So you obviously have this like amazing, like unique corner on the market, but it can be really hard to communicate that to people and like stand out. So how did you manage to compete with more established makeup brands um, all the way from like drugstore to high end ones? Yeah, in the beginning, um, you know, I started posting videos on TikTok and it was just a comparison of this is our green color changing blush versus a powder blush, a cream blush, a um, liquid blush. And what was really unique about our product was number one, no one had ever seen anything like that before. So there was a lot of curiosity, but you can really see it work right before your eyes. It's a liquid that goes on clear and then it changes colors within a few seconds. And you can see that it has this beautiful natural highlighter effect. So it hits light in a really different way that you might not get with powder. And um, because we were, you know, kind of challenging the format, just being able to demonstrate it was very valuable because, you know, we weren't in stores in the beginning and it's very different when you get a, you know, in-store demo or a live demo, but trying to replicate that um, using like eight second videos was, you know, it was, it was a challenge, but it was, you know, it, I think it goes down to how unique the product is and how well it works. And um, we got so many video testimon testimonials of different people using it and you can see like it's a, it's a different color on on um different people but it's the right color and giving that visual proof was something that was um that was really fun to do on social so i know you said it was like the world's first color changing blush i've nailed to use it but i think it's super cool like especially all the products that are like this is like your custom color based on like your ph levels whatever like that customization aspect i think is super cool um, but since the byo blush was one of the first products that you had to go viral can you talk a little bit more about like how you're leveraging that like virality to build like an engaged and loyal community from there? Yeah, so um, with the blush, I think it really kind of set the tone in terms of how I think about product, how I um, want to create products that are really innovative. So every time we launched new products, you know, I definitely take feedback. I like pretty much read all the comments. I still run our TikTok and I pretty much read everything. But um, when we launched our primer uh, probably about like nine months afterwards, afterwards, I really wanted something that was really innovative in the primer category that was doing things that I had never seen before that I really wanted um, because we were kind of had this reputation for creating, you know, the world's first X. Um, by the time we launched our primer, people knew that there would be something really special about it. And even with our setting spray, what, what's really unique about it is that it's pink and, you know, that was kind of what went viral for, for us. And we always add these, um, kind of unexpected touches that you might not typically see, but it makes it really easy to use. So do you have advice on like going from viral to community? Because I feel like a lot of people, their goal is I want to go viral. Like I want this to go viral. That'll change everything. But as social marketers, we know that going viral is just one surge and you want to be consistent. So how do you balance turning viral into consistency? Yeah, I think, you know, like most, like probably 99% of everything I make is a fluff and that's something that's just part of the process. For me, it's something where I just really enjoy content creation. I enjoy being able to talk about um, our products, talk about the process. You never know what's going to go viral. You never really know what's going to hit. But the way that I like to think about content and, um, you know, the content that we make is, you know, ultimately I'm just asking people permission for their time and their attention, and I want it to be worthwhile. So as much education as I can provide, as many tips as I can provide, um, you know, there's so many things that I've learned just through the process of creating these products that I wish I had known when I was, you know, younger, and I wish, you know, someone would talk about it and have the time. I don't even know if anyone finds it interesting, but if it's helpful for anyone, um, I do enjoy it. Yeah. Also, could you talk a little bit more about like you starring in the TikTok videos? Because I know like almost everyone in the videos is you. You're the face of it, um, at least on TikTok. Like, can you talk about like why you chose to do that? Because I feel like it's not very common with a lot of makeup brands. Like a lot of times they're utilizing more influencers or just like 
kind of a general product thing with no like face of the brand. Um, so can you just elaborate a little more on that? That kind of came by accident. I did not ever <laughs> intend to create content. I never thought I would. Um, but after we had launched the brand, you know, it was such a unique formula and it was such a unique product. And um, I developed the product during COVID. So I didn't really even test it on that many people other than, you know, my husband and a handful of people. I just knew that I had to demonstrate it. I had to um, show how it looked like on skin compared to something else. It wasn't like anyone had ever bought the product up until that point. And um, it kind of came just because we were just starting out. We really had, you know, we had nothing else that we could do, um, had no marketing budget. And now for me, it's become um, a great way to kind of storytell, um, kind of share the journey. Um, you know, there's there's definitely like wins and losses. Um, and sometimes I just honestly just like to record how I'm feeling for that day just so I can look back on it. But it's, uh, yeah, it was not intentional at all. Do you have any preference to TikTok over other platforms or do you find yourself finding other wins posting in other places? Yeah, we definitely um, do between like reels and TikTok. And I really just see it as like short form content that, you know, you try to get to the point in a couple seconds or less. Um, sometimes definitely the topics that we talk about, it's it warrants a lot more than that. Um, but I like, you know, just recording things on my phone. It doesn't have to be highly produced. I can be very responsive. If someone has a very specific question, can you show me how this works with XYZ? And I, and I have the products in front of me. Like I don't, um, I don't have to hesitate to just like show people. Um, and I really like that just having kind of like a visual communication tool. It sounds to me like authenticity in presenting your product is like really what matters to you. And it makes sense considering that you have these like green, body beneficial products, I think having like an authentic uh, energy to your marketing goes hand in hand with that. Do you think that that's one of the things that attracts people to trying Euphoria over brands that are maybe utilizing these influencers that people are recognizing or just promoting paid products over and over? I mean, I think it's probably different for every single brand. Um, for us, it just kind of happened out of, I want to say like necessity. Um, but every time I get to um, share something that's unique um, because, you know, I'm very involved in product development or um, just, you know, uh, my ideas with, with the business, I, I like doing that. And then for posting on Reels, so I know you use like Reels and TikTok. Do you have kind of like a different strategy for TikTok versus Reels? Or is it kind of just you being like, someone asked me something, I'm going to respond, I'm going to make this video and engage with the community? Yeah, I think it's very similar. Um, with TikTok, I will be just a little bit more responsive. Like I might make a video off of a comment and that might be something that inspires the content creation. Reels is a little bit more planned out where we will um, plan it out like a, a month in advance or like a couple weeks in advance. Whereas TikTok, sometimes I'm just like, oh, I have a great idea. I think it's um, because like trends and sounds are so, they're kind of inspiring for content creation on TikTok and you have that um I don't know, its own little TikTok culture. So that would be the biggest difference is that um, TikTok, I'm very just, however I feel like there really is no plan and Reels, like there is a little bit more of a plan. Going live has become a strategy for a lot of different creators on TikTok and businesses. Have you utilized going live at all or is that something that you're not going for? We used to do it more. Um, I do like doing it. I just have a little bit less time nowadays um because i was just in the middle of the move but i like it because it's a very unique content style where you can talk for you know a longer period of time and you can really answer people's specific questions and you can do follow on like clarification questions i like doing demos on a um on a live there's like certain things that you know it wouldn't really work on a tiktok or a reel so i like it um just because it's a different way to engage and do you think there's more value in the lives coming from you as the CEO, founder, product development, like rather than a, a marketer, not to throw ourselves under the bus, but like you obviously have a lot more say in the products. And do you think that that has more of an impact on when you're having these live discussions? I don't think so. I think just having a way for 
people to engage with you while it's kind of like a live feedback where they can ask questions and someone who's you know well well versed in the product I think that would be just as effective because a lot of times it's at least in um, makeup it's like how do I use this how do I layer this um, can I use this with this so it's like that I think anyone could um, could really help in that way have any of your interactions with your online community be that through lives or regular posts have they inspired any products or things that you guys did differently can you tell us about something yeah the um so you know we went uh we launched our color changing blush and I never really thought that we would launch non-color changing shades but I think pretty much a week after we launched we launched it um someone actually called me and was like you, know, you should launch some non-color changing shades it was a it was like one of our earliest customers and it, this was so early that I was you know talking to a lot of our customers and I was like you know what that's a great idea and that ended up being um you know, our, our, our three new shades. I feel like you got into TikTok right at the right time. That's when everybody was joining was in 2020 or early 2021. Um, so it was a great time to be a brand building a presence. Cause I feel like a lot of brands were like, Ooh, do we want to be on this app? Do we, is that, is there space for us there? Um, what advice do you have for new companies that are building a brand and might not necessarily be able to jump into somewhere as new as TikTok? Yeah, I think for any new brand, I think sharing your story of why you created the brand, why you started the company, I think that that goes a long way. And it doesn't have to be on TikTok. It doesn't have to be on any specific platform. But finding a format that feels authentic to you, where you can share your story, I think that goes so far, especially as a new company. And, you know, I always... Um, think back to everything that led me to start this company. It was a very set of very unique experiences that kind of, you know, inspired me to create a lot of our products and especially to uh, create the brand. And I think for a lot of um, entrepreneurs who have, you know, a, a big why, um, you know, people are really interested in, in learning about that. And um, that's something that another brand can't replicate. It, it is your own really unique experience and to share that with the world. If people wanted to find you or Euphoria anywhere on social media, where should they look? So on Instagram and on TikTok, we are at Euphoria. And um, you can find us on our website at Ulta, at Credo Revolve, and on Amazon. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast. And if there's anything you'd like to hear us discuss, reach out on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And as always, stay optimistic.